another topic since the next talk is entitled Revisiting and Improving Algorithm for the Freaksaw Problem. And the talk is given by Claire de la Place. Thank you uh, for the introduction. So, will you all hear me? Okay. So, uh, if you were at uh, the REM station uh, on uh, Monday, you, and if you have listened to Gaetan's talk, you uh, may already know some things about the free zone problem. But now I'm going to uh, explain how we can actually do it without exploiting other people's resources. So, is that right? yeah. Oh, forgot to say that this is a joint work with uh, my advisors, Charles Yagi and Kerala Fouk. Okay. So uh, the problem we're facing is actually the following. We are given a free list A, B, and C, and we want uh, that a list of uh, uniformly random elements that are n-bit vectors, and we want to find uh, an element in each one of the list such that when we XOR them together, we obtain zero. So this is a difficult case of the generalized vertical problem that was introduced by Wagner in 2002. It has application in a good analysis of some authenticated uh, encryption scheme, such as, yeah, such as the COPA-based one. And uh, in our case, the list are formed by querying oracles, and then we can make them as big as we want. You can also notice that if uh, the product of the size of the list is uh, greater or equal to uh, 2 to the n, then we'll have a solution with high probability. So, um, before I explain what we actually did on uh, this work, I will uh, recall uh, some uh, previous work and background about this problem and um, describe the issues that we were facing. Then I will present our new algorithm from this problem and also I will present an adaptation of an older algorithm that was uh, designed actually for the free sum problem over the integers. Okay, so um, the first uh, naive way we, uh, we can solve the problem that I can describe is that we can uh, compute all uh, pairwise sum of elements from A and B and directly check if that sum is in the last list C. So if it is not, we can just discord it and compute the next term. So the time complexity of such a name algorithm will be uh, this um, one here. And the space complexity is um, basically uh, proportional to storing uh, the list. So, uh, for instance, if we choose the list to have the minimum size that is 2 to the n over 3 so that we have a, pro a solution with high probability, then the time complexity of the procedure will be quadratic in the size of the list. Um, we can also, uh, as we are free to choose the size of our list, we can also decide to uh, reduce uh, A and B uh, and, of course, um, make more queries for C, so that there will still be a solution with high probability. And with uh, this choice of um, size of list here, uh, we can reduce the time complexity of the algorithm to 2 to the n of a 2, at the cost of increasing the space complexity of the algorithm. So uh, the time and space trade-off for uh, this kind of problem has been well studied in the past. So for instance, by Wagner in 2002 and also by Bernstein in 2007. So for the generalized for the, uh, problem. So now I'm going to recall uh, Wagner's, uh, the ideas of Wagner's algorithm for the free sum, for the free zone problem. So the idea is that we can increase the number of queries and then search for one solution among many. 
So if uh, we are allowed to make more queries, we can decide to uh, reduce the last list uh, C to uh, only uh, one element that starts to only, uh, sorry, a few elements that start with uh, the same uh, prefix P that is uh, decided. Okay. So uh, then we uh, will, um, sorry, then we will compute um, all pairwise terms from elements from A and B that uh, start with the same prefix P than the elements from the last list C. <coughs> so uh, Wagner's idea was that when we are allowed to do the end of the two queries, we can reduce the size of the last list to only one element. Uh, and then he has a time and space complexity that is 2 to the n over 2. So that's the same uh, than the quadratic algorithm. So for the case of the Fixo problem, there is no real, no real improvement with Wagner's algorithm. But uh, later, in uh, 2014, uh, Nikolic and Sasaki proposed a way to uh, improve this algorithm uh, they say that if uh, you uh, slightly reduce the number of queries compared to uh, Wagner's algorithm to uh, two to the L that basically satisfies this quantity here, uh, you can choose P to be uh, the most frequent prefix in uh, your list C of size two to the L, and uh, P would be an L bit prefix uh, also. And then uh, they obtain this time and space complexity, and so they have uh, gained uh, sp um, square root of n divided by the natural uh, logarithm of n uh, speed up compared to Wagner's algorithm. But before that, uh, Jules already proposed uh, another way to improve Wagner's algorithm which was, um, if you are followed uh, this number of queries, you can uh, reduce the size of C to 2 to the n, uh, to, sorry, you can reduce the size of C to n over 2 elements only, and then find a basis change that will force the element of C to start with um, n over 2 zeros. Then, using this trick, he obtained um, time, sorry, a time and space complexity that is this one, and he has then a square root of n speed up compared to Wagner's algorithm. Okay, so apparently Jules' algorithm seems to be the best because it has the best time complexity, but actually, if you want to compute a 96 bit Fritzor, with Jules' algorithm, you will require about 2 to the 48 operations, but you will have to manipulate lists that actually take 1 petabyte of data uh, into the memory, which makes this algorithm quite impractical. On the other hand, using the quadratic algorithm with um, the size of the list that is minimum so 2 to the n over 3, you will have to make about 2 to the 64 operations, which is more, but you will only have to manipulate um, 206 uh, gigabytes of data, which makes this algorithm more practical. So, uh, to summarize this, if you want to um, compute a Frigzor in practice, you have to keep the size of the list small. So, um, in this idea, Bernstein proposed in 2007 what is called the clamping trick. The, the idea is that you can increase the number of queries while reducing the storage. So, if you are allowed 2 to the k queries with k greater than n over 3, then um, you will find a parameter L that satisfies this equation here. And um, you can 
each time you query your oracle, you can decide to discard all the vectors that you obtain that do not start with L zeros. So then you uh, will reduce the storage because you will start only a portion of the vector. And you will also reduce the size of your problem because you will not solve the uh, Frickzor problem over uh, n prime bits with uh, n prime equal to n minus, minus l. So, to give you an example, if you're allowed 2 to the n over 2 queries, you will add l that will be equal to n over 4. You will add the same com time complexity as Wagner's algorithm, but you will add, reduce the um, memory complexity to 2 to the n over 4, so that's better. So now that we know all of this, we uh, proposed a generalization, uh, a new algorithm that is a, in fact a generalization of Joule's algorithm to any size of input list. So um, we, uh, fix, we choose a parameter k that I will describe later and um, recall that n is the size of the uh, bits uh, of the vector that we consider. Um, we uh, pick up a sublist of um, the last list C, so an arbitrary sublist. So, for instance, the first n minus k entries, and then we apply juice, we apply juice algorithm. So, by that I mean that we find a basis change that will force. Uh, k um, the, that will force the entries of our sublist here to start with k zeros, and um, then uh, find pairwise sum from these two lists that uh, also start with k zeros and check if this sum belongs to the list here. So we have to reiterate the procedure. Oh, sorry. First, uh, this. The cost of this uh, thing is uh, basically um, big O of size of L plus size of B. And we have to reiterate this procedure over and over again until we have uh, watched the whole list C. So basically that's size of C divided by N minus K operations. Uh, iterations, sorry. So uh, we figured out that choosing k to be equal to this quantity here, we have a time uh, complexity that would be this one. And uh, for instance, if we have reduced, uh, if we choose the size of the list that is 2 to the n over 3, then uh, with k to be equal to n over 3, we obtain the time n speed up compared to the quadratic algorithm, so uh, we are quite happy. So, uh, to give you a concrete example of how this um, works, we uh, choose to compute a 96 bit Fritzor. So, uh, we allowed ourselves to perform uh, 2 to the 48 queries to each oracle. So then we can, uh, as it is a bit more than strictly required, we can perform a clamping over 24 bits. So we have reduced our problem to uh, the one of uh, solving the Fritzor over uh, 72 uh, bits. And uh, then we uh, process the list using the algorithm that I've just described before. So we process them on the, only on the first 64 bits, because 64 is the size of a machine word. And we can find all the solution using our algorithm. And after that, we have just to test the, uh, <coughs> the partial solution on the remaining 8 bits. So, so that's about uh, 2 um, 56 test. So we performed some uh, experimentation for uh, this uh, problem. So we uh, computed uh, 96 bits of uh, SHA-256, for example, 96 bit uh, SHA-256, 
So the tests were performed on um, uh, as well for i5 skew. Um, so here you can see that after the clamping, uh, the quadratic algorithm uh, took about uh, 300 CPU hours. Then, uh, when our algorithm took about 100 uh, CPU hours, so it is faster even in practice. And the clamping also allows to reduce the data to um, megabytes instead of gigabytes. We also noticed that the creation of a list is what uh, takes the most time, so uh, it's about uh, 100 times slower than processing the list on the same uh, computer. So to summarize this, uh, this algorithm can be applied to uh, any size of uh, input list. Uh, it has uh, a time and speed up compared to the quadratic algorithm with the same amount uh, of data. It is in practice three times faster uh, with n equal to 96. It is also uh, faster than the algorithm designed by Nikolic and Sasaki with the same amount of data in theory using the clamping trick. And uh, with the same amount of data, it is uh, exactly the same than Ju's algorithm. So we uh, have also been thinking of possible improvements. So our idea was to find basis change that uh, will increase, uh, increase sorry, the size of the uh, sublist we consider so that it will reduce the number of uh, iterations. So in the paper we propose two ways of doing this, but uh, we only obtain constant uh, time improvement. So now I'm going to talk about another algorithm that is an adaptation uh, from an older algorithm from Baran, Dimein and Patwash group for the system problem over Z+. We, uh, what we did actually was to transpose it for the Frigzor problem. So uh, the idea uh, is that you can dispatch the uh, entries of your list into uh, buckets according to the first k bits. Then, uh, if uh, we uh, did not AU the buckets containing uh, the element of A that start by U, we, uh, for each good bucket, triplet of buckets like this, we want to perform a constant time preliminary test that will basically tell us, by just looking into an hash table, if there is a S bit partial collision uh, in this uh, bucket. So if the test fails, then we will know that there is no solution for sure. But if the test succeeds, then there may be a solution and we'll have to solve the small instance. So um, if you want to look briefly at how this preliminary test works that's, uh, this, uh, that way, we have a first pre-computing table T that uh, suggests T of i is equal to 1 if and only if this condition here is satisfied, uh, knowing that i has this specific structure here, and each part of uh, each part a i a b uh, i i a i b i c uh, is as this structure here that comes from uh, the elements here. Okay. So um, we uh, proved that uh, when uh, n grows up to infinity. And if we have a machine that can actually store uh, the uh, vectors on a constant number of words, we can find an S such that only one triplet will pass the test with high probability without uh, increasing too much the space. So, for instance, if our list are 2 to the n over 3, we add this time and space complexity in theory. So that's much better than any other algorithm I've described so far. But in practice, uh, with uh, n equal to 96 and machine words of size 64, uh, if we want to have only one uh, bucket to pass the test with high probability, and so the same time complexity that uh, we claim, we'll have to process the list on uh, buckets that contain about a tenth of an entry, so that makes the whole uh, procedure totally impractical. 
So I'm briefly concluding that this work uh, discusses issues arising from the Frigzol problem. We propose an algorithm that is uh, better in theory and in practice than the quadratic algorithm. We also propose uh, an adaptation of an older algorithm that is asymptotically faster than any other, but totally impractical. So next, we would like to compute a 128-bit uh, Frigzor on SHA-256, but uh, as unlike Gaetan, we do not have an army of Bitcoin miner working for us. We uh, expect to have formed the list in about two years using just a single outdated Bitcoin miner. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.